Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Have you ever been struck in the solar plexus? Have you ever had that wind knocked out of you? In this video, we're going to discuss the mechanism of what's called a solar plexus attack. And really, the solar plexus is just the common term for the technical term celiac plexus. So first of all, let's discuss what the celiac plexus is. So the celiac plexus is really just a complex network of nerves that lies in the abdominal cavity, really sort of right behind the rectus abdominis muscle, okay? And it controls a huge amount of viscera in the abdominal pelvic cavity. For example, the celiac plexus is known to control some aspects of the liver, the spleen, the stomach, the pancreas, the kidneys, adrenal glands, and so on and so forth. And the reason that the celiac plexus is commonly referred to as the solar plexus is because if you look at the nerves coming out of the celiac plexus, they sort of radiate out like the rays of a sun. And since solar means sun, that's why they call it the solar plexus. And if you were to get hit in the solar plexus with enough force, it can, as we say, knock the wind out of you and basically make it to where your breathing is disrupted for a number of minutes even and even bring you to the ground. It's so painful. All right, so first of all, let's discuss the anatomy. Where is the solar plexus? So here's a sort of a cool image right here. You can see the sternum in yellow right here. Obviously, you can see the ribs. So here's the sternum. This is one of the landmarks we're going to look at. Up here at the top is obviously the manubrium of the sternum. We have the sternal body, and down here, the most important one is the xiphoid process. These red things right here, these are basically the left and right aspects of the rectus abdominis muscle. And the solar plexus is kind of this area right here. It's a little bit beneath the xiphoid process, and it's going to be behind the top of the rectus abdominis. Now, obviously, if you don't have visible abdominal muscles, it would be hard to, to find that based on that. But another way you can think about it is the solar plexus is basically halfway between the belly button and the bottom of the pectoralis major muscle, the chest muscle. So if you go right between the bottom of the pecs in the belly button, right in that area is where the solar plexus is, okay? And notice it's beneath the xiphoid process and not in an area that is covered or encased by the ribs. Okay, so this is your solar plexus right here. I'd also like to review another thing, and that is the left and right lungs and then the diaphragm. Now, obviously, we know the lungs are for breathing, but what you may or may not know or remember is the diaphragm is the skeletal muscle that allows for breathing. So when the diaphragm contracts, it pulls the lungs downward, allowing them to expand, and that allows you to breathe in, so inhalation or inspiration. All right? So when the diaphragm contracts and relaxes, that produces inspiration and expiration, respectively. And so if you were to actually... Uh, injure the diaphragm or cause it to spasm, you would obviously affect the breathing because if the diaphragm's in a spasm, that's going to affect the way the lungs inspirate and expirate. And the diaphragm itself actually lies sort of right in the same area as the solar plexus. So when somebody gets the wind knocked out of them by getting struck in that area, it actually has less to do with the plexus or the nerves itself and more to do with actually getting a spasm in the diaphragm, okay? So when you get struck in the solar plexus area with enough force, that force or energy is actually translated to the diaphragm, and when the diaphragm gets an acute blow to it, that can actually cause the diaphragm to spasm. And so what we'll do is kind of follow this flow chart right here. So if you get a blow to the solar plexus, that energy of the strike or the blow really a blunt force, is going to be transferred to the diaphragm, which causes the diaphragm to spasm. And really by spasm, we just mean it does not appropriately contract and relax. And so if it's not appropriately contracting and relaxing, as a skeletal muscle should, that's going to affect breathing. Because recall, it, we require proper contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm in order to produce proper inspiration and expiration of the lungs. And so that blunt force causes the diaphragm to spasm, disrupts its contraction cycle between contraction and relaxation, and that disrupts breathing. And so for that reason, when you have that much problems breathing, it usually brings people to the ground. 
also because it produces a lot of pain. Generally, the pain has more to do with the nerves that are in this area. The fact that you get the wind knocked out of you has more to do with the diaphragm actually being struck indirectly, and then that causes disruptions or perturbations in your breathing cycle. But the pain itself is more to do with the nerves, the solar plexus itself. And so really, when you get the wind knocked out of you, there's really two things you experience. One is obviously the trouble breathing. That has to do with the diaphragm being struck indirectly. But then you also will experience some pain most likely, and the pain has more to do with the nerves that are in the solar plexus. Okay, And even when these nerves are struck, because they control things like the liver and the and the pancreas and stuff, you can also have some gastrointestinal problems, especially if the blow is hard enough. But the point is, is that the wind being knocked out of you actually has to do with the diaphragm being struck itself rather than the nerves. And because an attack to the solar plexus can be both painful and incapacitating to the person being struck, it's often one of the techniques taught in a self-defense course. So if somebody was attacking you on the street, one place to attack, probably not the first place you would go to, but if it's open, is you drive a blow right to the solar plexus and potentially if it's hard enough it'll be able to knock the victim to the ground because they won't be able to breathe properly and it can cause intense pain. All right, hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of what the solar plexus is, where it is, and the mechanism of why it hurts so bad and knocks the wind out of you when you're attacked in that location. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.